Hello, what is going on everybody? My name is John Hammond and welcome back to another Over the Wire video. Uh, still looking at the Bandit War game. Uh, last case, last time we were jamming, we are, uh, just finished up Bandit level 7. Uh, at least we got the password for that, so... Let's move on to that in the website, just to see what are really the prompt is for this. And we can SSH into that, again using SSH pass, using uh, the file name that we're supplying and saving the password in, or you could enter it if you really wanted to, copy and paste it, and then make sure we're actually using that user for SSH command. So let's jump in. The prompt here says, the password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt next to the word millionth. Okay. So we've got data.txt in our home directory, and we can cat it out just to see the output. And there's a lot of nonsense, random words, and what probably is the, a potential password on the right-hand side. I'm going to keep pressing Control-C until uh, I get my prompt back. So uh, you'll notice that the commands you may need to solve this level have changed from the previous one uh, into this one because we're entering a new phase in the over the wire bandit war game. Um, grep is going to be our weapon of choice here and grep will print lines in any file or centered output that's piped into the program matching a certain pattern. So it's a really awesome quick uh, find utility for the text that we're working with in our terminal. Um, it takes the pattern that we're looking for and the file that we want to uh, examine as arguments, or we can just pipe it in uh, as we've seen. So let's actually check out that data.txt again. And we want to be looking for the word millionth, right? So grep will return the lines that match that pattern or that match that kind of query or thing that we're looking for. So if we catted that data.txt out, pipe it to grep, and we can just apply the pattern that we're looking for. And I'm going to use quotes here just to kind of make it, I don't know, say that this is the string I'm looking for. And I'm going to look for the word millionth. Cool. Just like that, we get a hit. Millionth is highlighted in red because that's the pattern we were searching for. And this must be the password that we need for the next level. Let's put this in bandit 8. Let's go ahead and connect into that. And now we can jump in. All right, so what is this prompt? Password for the next level is stored in the file data.txt and is the only line of text that occurs only once. Hmm. All right, what is data.txt? A lot of nonsense. Probably potential passwords again. So we need to figure out which of these lines is unique. And you'll see that there are some things that are kind of similar to that in the commands you may need to solve this level uh, category here on the website. Unique. Uh, without a UE at the end, is the command we can use to actually figure this out. So let's check the man page for that, just to determine what it is. It'll remove the repeated lines, so let's try it. If we pipe it into, you, pipe it into unique, it doesn't look like it makes any change, um, but we don't know why. Ah. If you double check the man page, it says filter adjacent matching lines from input. Adjacent matching. So they've got to be all the ones that actually are the same that, that do repeat have got to be put together. So we can do this. We can kind of accomplish this with the sort command. We'll pipe this into sort now. Nice. Okay, so now all of the repeated lines, the ones that match together, are grouped. They are all adjacent. Now we can run unique. Okay, great. So now we don't have any repeating lines in this output, but how do we know which which line occurs only once? I don't know if you saw it in the unique man page when you were checking it out, but there is an argument tax C that will prefix the number of lines by the number of that prefix all the lines by the number of occurrences, or how many times they repeated in this case. Since we use sort to put them all together, sort them into their adjacent groups, and now we can use unique tax C to see the count number, or how many times they did repeat. Unique tax C, and a lot of these are going 10, but this one only occurs once, so that must be what we're looking for. We can use grep tack V to invert our, our, our query or our, our pattern matching, what we're trying to find in this output. Because normally when we did it before, it would just return a line that had 
a one in it, but obviously we're going to match a lot of other things. So if we just work a little work a little smarter here, we can say let's invert all the lines and do not do not display anything that matches like the number 10. So we get rid of all those. Now we only see just that output, only the one of the password that we want here. Cool. Let's put this in bandit 9. And we are cruising. Are we going to log in? Yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Bandit 9 into level 10. The password for the next level is stored in the data.txt file. And one of the few, one of the, oh, sorry, one of the few human readable strings, beginning with several equal signs. Okay, so. Let's cat out data.txt, and it's gross binary. Okay, a lot of raw data that we can't really read through. So how do we parse through this? Well, we can run strings, just like we did earlier, or at least I kind of mentioned earlier, and strings will just only return the human-readable characters or things that look like potential English or potential, you know, something that's not all those bytes and all those symbols and all those weird, <clears throat> excuse me, all those weird characters. So let's pipe that output right into strings. Nice. And we can see kind of a culprit right here. This is more than very much likely probably the password for the next level. Cool. Looks like the only other line that has <laughs> all these equal signs at the start is either password or is a... We can probably, if we wanted to, again, grep. We can keep chaining our pipes. Find all these equal signs. Oh, you can see the password is this thing. Okay. Nice. Put that in bandit 10, right? And we'll change the file that we're reading out of and the username that we're going to log in with. Next level. The password for the next level is stored in the data.txt file, which contains base64 encoded data. Okay, so we're logged in. Ah, this probably looks kind of similar to the nonsense we've been seeing for our passwords, but is base64 encoded. Um, and you can tell because of these trailing equal signs. That's always the, the telltale sign that it is base64 encoding, is that it may have zero or one, two, or three equal signs trailing because it's used for padding. Uh, base64 has to end as a multiple of four in its length. So if you haven't seen base64 before, it's super duper common. Um, there is a command line utility, base64, that's built in. And we can use that to either encode or decode. If you use it with the tack D flag, the tack D argument, you will decode the data. So Let's take that output, again, catting data.txt, so we get it in our standard output stream, pipe it into base64, and remember we use tack D to decode it. Nice. It says the password is this. Let's go ahead and put that in bandit11, just so we have it saved, and we can log into that in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're enjoying these. Uh, again, just running through Bandit over the wire. Hope you're learning a little bit of uh, neat stuff and just kind of getting the feel for, man, how can you how can you rock the keyboard and just be just a command line cowboy? So, all right. See you in the next video.